Hey everyone, and welcome back. One of the greatest things about being into electronics is being able to solve problems. And so I'm using my partnership with PCBWay to solve a problem. You see, when I come down here into my workshop, it's really dark and my studio lights only have a light switch all the way at the end. So I've designed this little uh, motion detection detector light circuit and it's actually a really simple circuit. I'll show you just in a moment how you can turn these parts into that. And you can also get uh, these boards here that I've designed straight from PCBWay. The link is in the description or you can make it on a breadboard. So just doing my best a big Clive impression here. Um, it all starts out with an 18650. Now you can salvage these, you can buy them from Amazon or whatever you want. Um, my goal was to do it um, you know, battery powered because at the amount of current we'll be using for this LED, there's gonna be a negligible amount of this capacity used. And also it lets me stick it up places where you know I kinda don't have access to wires and stuff. So the 18650 sits here. And then that is connected to the B plus and B minus of this uh, TP4056 plus DW01 module. So you just got to make sure that it's the module with the cell protection if you're going to use unprotected cells like I am here. Um, the output of this module just goes to the positive of the PIR and the negative of the PIR and to the positive side of an LED. You get these uh, Luxian star type LEDs. I believe these are three watts, but I'm running them uh, a little bit cooler. So I expect this to last for a very long time. Uh, and I expect the battery not to drain so quickly. To limit the current on that, I've got uh, four 10 ohm resistors in a series parallel arrangement. And so if you put two 10 ohm resistors in series, that'll make 20 ohms. And then you do that again uh, in parallel and that makes 10 ohms again. So these four resistors will share the dissipation for the LED and that goes into the collector of a 2N3904 transistor which you guys probably have in your junk bin anyways but on uh, this particular one I use SMD parts. You can use through hole. I might actually design a through hole variation for this if the demand is high enough in the comments below. So let me know if you want a through hole version of this. Then the PIR uh, output goes through a 470 ohm resistor, again uh, SMD, and that's just to protect uh, the current of the output, but I think it's already uh, protected, so I wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to worry about that anyways. That goes to the base of the 2N3904, and then all the grounds are tied together. So super simple circuit, something that you can breadboard up pretty simply. Um, I just like the PCB version uh, with mounting holes and stuff so I can mount it up wherever I want. I also peeled away the uh, silk screen in the design, uh, or sorry, the um, solder resist in the design front and back. And so you'll be able to dissipate the heat from these uh, Luxian star style LEDs. So that's it. Uh, breadboard this up if you'd like. I'm going to be soldering up my PCB white PCBs.
And there we go, all soldered up. Uh, I put a little socket here uh, in order to accept the PIR. And you'll also notice it says ground signal positive on my silk screen here. But really, um, this is actually positive signal ground. It'll be fixed in the uh, files linked below. But as you can see, everything fits really well. Um, the LED fits really well. There are some lenses you can get for these Luxian star style LEDs. I would just probably stick it on uh, personally. Um, but yeah, you can put it on like that so you can throw the light a little bit more directly. Um, for this uh, module here, I just flowed solder through the holes. So I just held the iron on there with the module crimped down uh, pretty tight. And then you just heat up and it, and it, it shoots um, solder through the hole as you can see and then in the on the back side I just touched it up uh, I used two screws uh, these are nylon screws but you should be able to use conductive screws because they don't touch both pads um, but yeah two screws to hold the LED in place uh, and that's it and that little um, little adapter there so this goes on here and the reason why I just gave you holes is so you can choose to put a little, um, you know, uh, a little pin header there to put your PIR on, or you can mount the PIR elsewhere and have wires coming up to it. Um, servo extensions for RC cars work really well for that because it's the three wires. And your LED can also, uh, it's just soldered up here, positive, negative. So you can also use your LED mounted elsewhere. Um, and I wrote down what your mounting holes are, so use M3 hardware here, and it's 90 mil by 45 mil. So if you want to build a little uh, 3D printed mount for it, um, this is something I'm going to try to do on all my boards in the future: is put the mounting hole um, dimensions on it because I never remember. Um, just make sure you take a look at your connections, make sure they're all good, um, but because or else you might, uh, you know, short something. We don't want that. But yeah, this holds in pretty well, and the next thing to do is just put your uh, 18650 on. I put a little bit of Kapton tape on there just to make sure that I'd be able to pull it out. So let's see if this thing smokes now. Seems to be okay. All right, and now we just wait for the uh, PIR. Oh, hopefully nothing is shorted. Yeah, not sure why that's not working. It should be on now. Unless this um, this cell was pretty drained. Let me go get a uh, charger and we'll charge this thing up. Well, no diagnostics needed. Um, yeah, it just it just started working. So uh, it's probably going to be constantly re-triggering now because I'm standing right in front of the sensor. Um, but as you can see, it is putting out light. So there we go. Um, now this is not uh, super bright, but it is uh, quite bright for a dark room, which is what the goal was. And yeah, we're, we're just trying to preserve this battery a long time. Now I want to head off a couple of questions that are going to happen in the comments. What happens when um, this light turns on, but this battery gets low? Well, like I said, we have the TP4056 in here, but we also have the DW01. You have to get the ones with the protection chip. What will happen is when this battery gets too low, uh, I think it's 2.5-ish volts, it'll cut off the circuitry, nothing will work. The other thing, the parasitic drain of this, um, of this PIR sensor is like tiny. It's like a or a couple milliamps. And uh, one of these cells, which are not new, this was sent to me by a viewer, uh, and I think it used to be part of a drill battery. Um, it's been running for almost two weeks now uh, down here in the basement, and I haven't charged it up to full before I put it in, uh, nor am, have I had to charge it yet. So if I have to charge these things every couple of weeks, no big deal, right? But on top of that, because the battery is re is removable, which is very important for me, I can just charge some cells, and then just swap this cell, and then that's it. Charge and then charge this off the device. And so there not there doesn't need to be a single cell that's um, you know 
attached to this very unit. Um, so yeah, and because we have the 10 ohm resistance, we have like a 50, uh, or sorry, yeah, 10 ohm. So it would be something 4.2 volts uh, divided by 10. So it's like half an amp max um, current, but I don't even think this is pulling that much. And it's quite bright, like right now when I am looking at it, it's, um, it's a little too bright to look directly at. But then again, I have a little bit of photosensitivity. So this thing is a great project for a relatively safe, relatively low component count um, project. And you know, we've got this TP unit, this, uh, this cell, you can just use salvage cells or brand new cells, it doesn't matter, it's got the PIR, and plus it does the job just well. Now, the next thing I will say is that uh, these PIRs, you can put a, um, a uh, light detecting module, either a light detecting an LDR, light detecting resistance, or a photodiode, I'm not sure which is which, uh, which will allow you for when you turn on the lights or when it becomes daytime, uh, it won't trigger this light anymore. It'll make your battery last even longer. So I'm gonna be experimenting with that in a future video. Uh, but for now, let me know what you think of this little circuit. Uh, do you like it? Do you think it's useful? Are you going to try to build one yourself on breadboard with uh, the diagram I provided earlier? Or are you going to order some boards from PCBWay? Either way, let me know what's going on. I love community feedback. I build these things to solve problems for me. But if they solve problems for you, I want to know about it. Thanks for watching.